Forget gurus. Forget anyone claiming to be an online business expert without going through the challenges of entrepreneurship themselves. The Real Money, Real Business podcast is here to prove the best insights in online business comes from your fellow online business builders. We dig into stories of entrepreneurs selling their business on the Empire Flippers marketplace so that you can learn how they made their business profitable, how they overcame obstacles, and what lessons they learned in their online journey. If you want to take your business and your knowledge to the next level, you've come to the right podcast. Let's get started. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Real Money, Real Business podcast. We record these interviews so potential buyers have more information about the seller and the business to help them make a buying decision. Before we dive in, let's go over a brief summary of this business. It's for an Amazon Associates and Affiliate business created in July of 2018 in the equipment niche. The average monthly revenue for the business is $3,333 and makes an average of $3,288 per month in net profit. The assets included in the sale are domain with all site content and files and freelancer contacts. For everyone listening, you can visit empireflippers.com marketplace and search for listing 59468 to learn more about the business, or you can unlock this listing to start your due diligence if you're interested in purchasing this asset. So that's a brief overview of the business for sale. Let's hear from the seller with me today. Welcome to the show, Dave. How are you doing? Hey, Nick. I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing great as well. And I'm looking forward to learning more about you and your business. So to start us off, can you tell us a little bit about your background in building and running online businesses? Sure. So I actually started in direct marketing, primarily in a B2B service niche for the most part. And I did lead generation and pay for performance type deals. And I did that for quite a while before I ever transitioned into the online space. And then I eventually transitioned 100% into online doing lead gen and affiliate marketing. So I've been doing this for a while back when there was Alta Vista, that'll tell you it's been a long time. So. <laughs> Got it. Starting off lead gen and affiliate marketing. Do you find that has helped you now with some of these more modern business models, like just the Amazon Associates model, for example? Absolutely. You know, I mean, the you're still dealing with the search engine optimization and content marketing and all the things. It's just, you know, some of the methods have changed a little bit, but it's definitely been beneficial to do anything like what we're doing now. So... Got it. And I know that this was a relatively recent acquisition of yours. I guess, what was your thought process or why did you choose this specific site or this business in general? Or if you wanted to talk about the niche as well, whatever you wanted to discuss. Yeah. Well, I purchased it initially for the most part because I just felt it was in a really good niche and it's in a higher price product niche. It's got a lot of demand and you know, the people, the customers in the niche, they seem to have a lot of disposable income for these products. So I knew that going in. And, you know, I always prefer to any of the niches I've ever dealt with from when I first started, especially back in the B2B, you know, I've always tried to choose specialty services or niches that were higher priced to begin with. For me, I prefer it. It's just a little bit you know, I mean, the commissions are obviously bigger. And in my opinion, you're doing the same amount of work. So I would prefer to have products that are a little higher priced. So this niche in particular, when I looked at it, and the opportunity was made available, that was one of the first things that attracted me. And then of course, when I did a little bit more due diligence, I saw that it just had a lot of room for growth. And I thought that it would make a great investment. And, you know, it was something that I wanted to have as a side project more than anything. Yep. Sounds good. And it sounds like this did make for a very valid investment. I guess, why are you deciding to sell the business now instead of keeping it and growing it further? Well, now what I really want to do is I've got another project that really is just I'm more passionate about. And, you know, at some point, (laughs) you only have so much time. Some point I had to decide if I wanted to continue to put in the effort into this business and grow it. I mean, I think it's got a lot of upside to this business that it's certainly not realized anything what it could. But, you know, I have to decide on time and passion and what I'm going to do. So I would really just prefer to sell it, 
and use the money and the time that I'm devoting to another project. So, Got it. Definitely. And during the time that you've owned this business, what did you learn from building or growing it that just seemed to work? Well, we haven't had it for a long time. So I can speak on the fact of what we did do in the short amount of time we've had it. One of the things we did initially, so when I initially first bought it, I just let it sit for the first couple months. We didn't do anything. And then we went in and edited the content. It doesn't have a tremendous amount of content on there, which is you know amazing that it's really able to do the revenue it does with a small amount of content, which I think just speaks to the you know further potential it could have. But we went in and we edited the content that was on there. There was a lot of grammar errors and a lot of things that I think just didn't build confidence when people hit the page. So we improved all the existing content that was on there. And we managed to cut the bounce rate pretty much in half after doing that. And it stayed consistently cut in half. And we've increased the time on page by a couple minutes from what it was. So I think that alone has built a lot of confidence in the content because it is in a niche where, you know, people that are involved in the niche, they're educated in their niche. And so if the content doesn't reflect that, I don't think that builds a lot of confidence for the sales. So that was one of the things we went in straight away and did. And we've had good success with that. Got it. Awesome. And during the limited time that you've had the business, was there anything you tried as far as a growth strategy or anything that didn't work out so well? That's a good question. I can't really say that there was anything we've tried that, I mean, obviously when you're writing content, you know, not every content is a home run, not everyone's ranking constantly where they want to be with every piece of content, but that takes time as well to mature and the content to mature. I guess if I was going to say there was any real challenge, it would probably, when you're hiring writers, because we do outsource our content writing to a couple writers. And I think, you know, anytime you're dealing with writers for any niche, you have to kind of sift through the mix and kind of find the right combination of talent with expertise and, you know, find people you can work with that you gel with and whatnot. But I mean, I've had that over the years with every single niche I've ever been in. So I wouldn't say it's a huge challenge. It's just something you do have to be aware of and you have to go through. But I mean, in all honesty, this type of business is a pretty straightforward business model. And, you know, it's not brain surgery. It's not super complicated to manage and run something like this. I've certainly had a lot worse, worse types of businesses to run and try to manage. So I think this is, you know, it's a pretty straightforward, simple business model. I mean, you identifying topics and search terms that you feel you can rank for, and you're having your writers do that, write the content, you're managing your writers, and, you know, it's just not super complicated. Got it. And that does kind of, maybe that's less spoken about the back end of hiring talent to make sure the bus is still moving. And maybe that's another, your point about, going into niches that are just higher priced items that have a larger profit margin, ideally, just being able to hire that talent on the back end. Yeah, it makes sense why you would go in that direction of higher priced items. Okay. It's always worked for me. I just prefer it. And like I said, when I started and I was started in the B2B sector and one of the very first niches I worked in was a really specialized service niche and for service businesses. And I guess I just like that when I didn't make as many sales, but when I made sales, they were very, Mm. they were lucrative. So I thought, well, hey, I'm going to stick down this road of trying to cater to higher price products in general. So, you know, anytime I look at a niche to go into, that's one of the first things I look at. If the products are, you know, priced well enough that there's a decent amount of commission involved in it. Got it. So with this business, I mean, comparatively, a more mature business, even though you've owned this personally for a short period of time, can you describe the amount and the type of work that you do on this business to maintain it? Yeah, it's actually pretty minimal for me. I mean, what we're doing now is we're averaging two to three new articles a week. Of course, you could do more than that or less than that, but that's pretty much the goal I've set for myself right now. And so I have the writers 
generate that content. My main job is just to identify the low hanging fruit or the topics that I feel we can rank for. And, you know, and I give them their assignments. They write the articles. It comes in. We edit that, put it on the site. You know, there's no customer service, which is another thing I like about this style (laughs) of business because I've been in businesses, you know, there's been things I've done that we did have customer service and that's a whole nother discussion, but you know, I like it. I like when there's, you know, it's hands off and you know, the products sell and you get a check. So, you know, everything's not simple, but it's definitely very doable and it's very straightforward. It's just not a super complex business. If you wanted to ramp up content production, you could ramp it up whatever you felt comfortable handling. Yeah. Well, let's talk about that actually going into the opportunities. If you were to keep the business, what are some ways that you would try to grow it? Well, one of the first things I would do is just what I just alluded to is I would just continue to consistently add content. There's roughly 50 something articles on the site. The last dozen or so have not even aged yet. They've just been there within the last probably four to eight weeks. So it's in dire need of continually adding consistent content. You just need to build that up and have, you know, a bit more diverse page traffic and, you know, just diversify that. It just protects you overall to have more content that's ranking well. So I would do that to increase traffic. And I would also probably add a couple additional affiliate partners. And, you know, that just, again, that also just gives you some security and protection. I mean, we do work with Amazon as well as another affiliate partner right now, but everyone knows what can happen with Amazon or they could slash commissions or do whatever they want. So I prefer to have the, you know, the security of having several affiliate partners. And, you know, the nice thing about this niche is there are plenty affiliate partners that are paying more than Amazon anyway. So it's not difficult to find more affiliate partners. So I would definitely add additional affiliate partners, at least a couple more. And I would, at some point in the near future, I would, as I increase traffic, I would probably add a premium ad network to the mix. And outside of that, I guess I would probably also definitely build a mailing list and start to market to that list. Because with these products, there's a lot of sales and different things going on through some of the affiliate partners that you could definitely monetize by marketing directly to your own list. You know, and probably in the future, I guess the last thing I'd probably do would be, I think there's a possibility to add a video or digital product of your own that you could add to this without going into too much detail. But I mean, you could definitely add something like that to increase revenue as well. So there's quite a bit you could do. I just consider the site right now, even though it's been around for a few years, I think it's solid, pretty steady performer. It's making a really good return considering the amount of traffic it's dealing with right now. So I just think there's a huge upside to it. Yeah, definitely seems like a lot of opportunities. And you did go into a little bit of the risks related to this, talking about just diversifying traffic and protecting yourself and different affiliates. Did you want to talk a little more about what you think the biggest risks are with this business that a buyer should be aware of? Sure. I think really there's just two things that are a risk or pose the most risk. And that would be Amazon. I mean, it could be any affiliate, but probably Amazon in particular, I would consider a risk you just need to be aware of. And, you know, the way to minimize that risk is just alluding to is to just diversify your affiliates. You know, in this space, there's plenty of good affiliates that are offering the same products or very similar and many of the same products. So you're not beholden to Amazon or any one affiliate. So I think that's a risk I would continue to diversify. And it isn't that I would even move away from Amazon. I would just be prepared that I had other affiliates in place and it would be no big deal if I had an issue where I needed to move away from Amazon. I could do so quickly. And I think the other risk is just what you know everyone realizes is just Google. I mean, you're dealing with a search engine, so you can always lose rank. You can always lose traffic. 
you know, that's always a risk you got to be aware of. And again, I think to diminish that risk, I would just continue to write good quality content that ranked well and diversify my page traffic. And, you know, if, if you suddenly have 200 articles that are bringing in the traffic versus 50, you have a lot less chance of losing everything. So, yep. Well said. Okay. Well, a few housekeeping questions to wrap this up. How much support are you willing to offer a new buyer? I'm pretty flexible. I mean, I want the buyer to succeed. I'm here to try to lend a hand if I can. So, I mean, I had offered 30 days of email support and a couple Skype calls. It's no big deal to me if you need a couple extra Skype calls or a little more support. So, I mean, I'm somewhat flexible within reason. I want them to succeed and not be stuck with questions or having an issue with anything. So I'll help, you know, I'm here to help. Okay, great. And would you commit to a non-compete? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I would not go back into the same niche. I've got another project I'm passionate about that is nowhere even related to this niche. So yeah, that's not a problem. Okay, perfect. And are you open to something like an earnout? I would definitely consider it. I'll put it that way. It would depend on the offer and how it's structured, but I definitely would consider it. I'm not opposed to looking at any offer. So, Okay, great. And putting yourself in the shoes of a buyer, why do you think this is a business worth buying? You know, it's a nice, straightforward, simple business model, and it's kind of already went into that part of it. But I think also it's just the fact that I'll tell you, it's the same reason why I purchased it is that it can usually take a couple years for a site like this to kind of gain some traction in Google, get some decent DR ranking and or rating. And it's like, you know, you've kind of bypassed all of that. You're getting a site that's already earning some consistent profit and it's proven. So it's a proven business model. It works. You're not spending a couple years to find out if you've got a good idea that's working or not, you know, it's working. And I think the other thing I really like about it is that, you know, you're making enough profit that you can take a small piece of that and pay writers and pay people to do work and still make a profit and put in your pocket. So, you know, it's a self-sustaining business model right off the get-go. Got it. And last question, potentially, is there anything you'd like to add that you think I might've missed during the interview? No, I think you about covered it, Nick. (laughs) I think you did a great job with these answers. Okay, well, Dave, I think this is the perfect spot to wrap this up. So thanks so much for sharing your story and joining us on today's episode. And yeah, I hope your business is purchased in the near future and by the right buyer. Great. Thank you, Nick. It was good talking to you. You as well. All right, everyone. Thanks for listening. To learn more and see if this listing has already been sold, head over to empireflippers.com slash marketplace and search for listing number 59468. And if you're watching this on YouTube, click the link in the description to go straight to the listing. And once you've unlocked this listing, you'll be given everything you need to know about this business. So until next time, enjoy your digital journey. 